welcome to the Starter Girls Podcast, your ultimate source of inspiration and empowerment. We're here to help women succeed in every area of their lives, career, money, relationships, and health and well-being. While celebrating the remarkable journeys of individuals from all walks of life who've achieved amazing things. Whether you're looking to supercharge your career, build financial independence, nurture meaningful relationships, or enhance your overall well-being, the Starter Girls Podcast is here to guide you. Join us as we explore the journeys of those who dare to dream big and achieve greatness. I'm your host, Jennifer Loading, and welcome to this episode. Welcome to another episode of the Starter Girls Podcast, wherever you are tuning in today. We are so thrilled to have you, and we've got another fabulous guest coming on today. So excited about what she's doing. Before I start this, I just kind of want to paint the picture here. So imagine being faced with a life-altering diagnosis, the kind that could make you question everything. But instead of letting it define you, you decide to defy the odds. You choose to rewrite the narrative, not just for yourself, but for others who might one day walk the same path. This is a story of resilience, determination, and an unwavering belief in the power of transformation. It's about tapping into an abundant source of vitality that's often overlooked and proving that it's never too late to reclaim your strength and rewrite your future. So I am so excited to welcome my guest on today, but before I tell you a little bit about her, we have to do a quick shout out to our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Productions. Need to add excitement to your YouTube videos or some expert hands for editing? Look no further. Walt Mills is the solution you've been searching for. Walt is not only your go-to guy for spicing up content, he's the force behind a thriving film production company with numerous titles in the pipeline. Always on the lookout for raw talent, Walt is eager to collaborate on film and internet productions. With a background deeply rooted in entertainment and promotion, Walt Mills leverages years of skills to give you the spotlight you deserve. Want to learn more about Walt and his work? Head on over to waltmillsproductions.net and let your content shine. All right. And with that, I'm going to be welcoming my guest here today. My guest is a shining example of what it means to take control of your health and destiny. After being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis a decade ago, she didn't let the prognosis hold her back. Instead, she embarked on a remarkable journey, not just to survive, but to thrive. Last year, at the age of 60, she became a European champion and master weightlifting in her age and weight category. Her experience led her to leave behind a successful career in journalism to become a health coach dedicated to empowering middle-aged women. Her focus? reactivating and rebuilding muscle to unlock vitality and confidence in midlife. So welcome to Starter Girls Podcast. Kim, we're here. We're so glad to have you here today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited too. And when I hear you talking about me, I think, is this really me? Wow. <laughs> it's great to look back sometime. I know. And you know what? I always tell people this because every time somebody comes on the show and I do these, you know, I love to tell stories. And I think they are so powerful when people can connect with why you do what you do. It's like they they all of a sudden can resonate with with this with your story. Right. And so I always tell people what I do. These bios this is my favorite part because I get to like really shine a light on the person coming on. And they always do this. They're like, wow. When I hear that, it's like, I get to think, wow, am I really that person that they're talking about? You know, and I learned this true story. I learned this in the 22 years that I was in Mary Kay, we always had to create accolades for when we were being called up on stage. And so this just, when I first started doing this, it felt so uncomfortable for me to write my own. But I got so used to doing this after a while that it was like, okay, we need your accolades. I need your bio. Just give it to me. I'll write it for you. Just give it to me. So I think it's great. I enjoy doing it. And it's fun to let you guys kind of see, hey, you're doing cool things and put the light, the spotlight back on you. Yeah. And I think it's something, especially as women, we always underestimate what we're doing, what we're achieving. You know, it could be a full day of work and still we think we haven't done enough and uh, you know, a full life of looking after people and still think we think, oh, I could have done more. I should have done better. Um, and it's great sometimes to take stock and to look back. And then when somebody else does it for you, I think it's easier because we still have this thing in us where we think, I, I, I'm not allowed to brag. I can't, I can't really say this, but somebody else can just, you know, look, look at you and say, look what, look what you did. Look what you did. And then you can see it in a different light and it, it feels good. I know, right? You can give yourself that pat on the back. 
say, I did some, I'm doing cool things in the world, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. So I want to talk, let's talk a little bit about you and what you're doing. I want to start there, talk a little bit about how you're helping your clients. Cause I feel like this is the most important part is like what we're doing. And then I want to talk about your journey. So maybe just kind of walk us through what this looks like for your experience with your clients. Yeah. So I work with women from 40 onwards, um, usually the time when they start feeling that their first, their body is letting them down. Um, and even though it, you know, it feels like it happens from one day to the next, that's what many say. I literally woke up and I had this belly or I had those eggs. Um, often it's years and decades in the making, um, and it can be very frustrating. So you've reached that stage and many are like confused, overwhelmed with all this information out there. And I, I help them feel better, feel stronger, sort of claim their power back with one simple thing, which is building muscle, becoming physically strong. It's what's, what helped me and it, it's really helping them to um, not only, you know, to, to sort of tone your body, all these things that you want to do, it has such an effect on your energy levels and on your mental health, your confidence, um, on your sleep quality, on everything. I call it the one-stop shop. Now, what I do with my clients is this. Women have like obstacles and preconceptions. Building muscle is not something, you know, we aspire to when we're raised to be pretty and, and elegant. And, you know, when we're lucky and have nice parents, we're raised to be educated. Um, but physical strength is never really mentioned in there. In many phases of our lives, it's taken for granted because we're carrying toddlers around and groceries and everything, but nobody ever sort of connects this with like deliberate, intentional strength training. So this is my mission to help women overcome this, um, the, this reservation. That, is that really for me? Is that not like Schwarzenegger style? And I make it as easy as possible. So I lower every single resistance level that there can be, which mm -hmm. is why we start with 15 minutes of strength training in the comfort of your home. So you don't have to pack a bag. You don't have to get changed. You don't have to drive. You don't have to find parking. You can really do it in your pajamas. So you have to take just one decision. And we do it after a thorough assessment because when you're not 20 anymore, you have different mileage, every one of us, in our joints and in our body. So I, I look at how you move, how strong you are, how mobile you are, and then I design that training so that it's perfect for you. It will be challenging but doable. And I think this is a like, really big difference with everything you see out there they're fantastic programs on YouTube. They're really great. But they're probably not for you when you're in your 50s and you haven't moved in a long time or maybe you have sore knees or an achy back. Um, they just, they, either they will frustrate you and you will stop or you will push through and you will get hurt. So this is my secret sauce, my zone of genius is I look at you, you know, how do you move? What can you do? And what will make you stronger and then make it as easy as possible, as easy to do, as short as possible, also to fit into your busy schedule. And the crazy thing, and many women, you know, they are so surprised when they see it after two weeks, you really don't need more than 15 minutes a day. In 15 minutes a day, you can change so much. And the first thing uh, they say after two weeks is, oh my God, I have so much energy and confidence. Um, and that's what makes me smile. That's why I do what I do. I love it, Kim. And, you know, listening to you, I mean, there's so many things I wanted to like chime in here and chime in there and chime because you have one thing I really, really like about you is that it's this one step process. It's not a, you know, because I think so many times we get into things and we just bite the whole, like take the whole thing in and try to do all these things. And I've shared with you that I, I mean, my background is fitness and wellness. I used to teach aerobics and I would always talk about these people coming into the gym and I would just get so frustrated because I would have these members that were basically consistent members that would come in all the time. They weren't, you know, over the top, but they just were consistent exercisers. And then every, you know, January when the New Year's resolution would come in, they'd pop in and they would bombard and they'd be there for hours. And I would just say, just give them time because it, this is how it is. This is the mindset that we come in and we just dive all in instead of making these small incremental changes in building up consistency. And I love that you're doing that because all of the work that I do, whether it's in the health and wellness space or it's coaching an entrepreneur, wherever that is, 
my whole premise is to take little small things and incrementally build wins and consistency so that you can build up your tolerance, your resilience, your confidence, right? All those things you're talking about. And then we have successful sustainability. Like we have that long-term win from this, you know? So I love that you're talking about that. And I do want to say about the protein because I'm with you or not the protein, the, the, the muscle mass. Um, I'm actually just wrapping up a, and I think I shared this with you. I'm wrapping up a keto certification. I've been low carb for many, many years, never did it for weight loss. Mine was all about healing my body, but a lot of people do that keto for weight loss stuff. I merely did it because I wanted to have heal my body, but have another modality to offer people that are in that space with chronic conditions and needing to heal their body. One of the things I learned in that, to your point, really about that muscle mass is even building protein, right? Like taking in protein. For the longest time we do, we get these ideas about not having muscle mass and am I eating too much protein and all of this stuff. And so I really had to shift my thinking a little bit to, okay, no, I've always thought it's okay to build the muscle mass, but even just so make sure I'm getting in my protein needs to meet my workout requirements so I can build my muscle mass, right? So I love that you're really talking about the strength training because I, I do think as we age, that's so, <laughs> the body changes, you know, like you're right. You wake up and you're like, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's like, you wake up and you're like, where'd those come, where'd that stuff yeah. come from, right? You know, and I was <laughs> watching a video even on like, think about like Alzheimer's disease. like. They're talking about how that's like a metabolic disease. And we think that it's an old people disease. And they're saying, no, this stuff starts way back. It's not you wake up one night and you have Alzheimer's. You've been progressively going into that probably in your, maybe in your thirties, forties, and then it shows up later. So to your point on this whole idea that it does, you don't just wake up with these, these things, you know? No, it's a long time in the making. And I think that's also the reason why, of course, the day we realize that this change has occurred. And even if it's been years, we want it to go away, like tomorrow. Uh, and that's why it's so counterintuitive to sort of reverse that process and do it step by step again. We, you know, we want it gone. We want results right now. And that's, it's quite normal. Um, the thing is, it doesn't work because it's too much. It's, it's too much change. And it's, I always say it's too many decisions that you are expecting from yourself from one day to the next. January 1st, like you said, you say, oh, I'm going to the gym three times a week now, and then I'm going to work out. It's great. And you think you think you have made one decision. Like, yeah, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to get fit and strong. Actually, you have sort of condemned yourself to making 10 decisions every time you want to go. Because you need to pack that bag. You need to decide what you're going to wear. You might even have to choose your gym before you do that. You have to step into your car. You have to drive through traffic. You have to, all these decisions, you have to make them. And you have to walk onto the gym floor. You know, the, most, the hardest thing for most women. And it's just too many decisions. You do not have that much um, headspace or energy uh, to, 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 from one day to the next, say, okay, yes, now every day I'm going to take like these 10 really good decisions. Um, every day at, when I want to go to the gym. That's why, you know, one bad day, one tired morning, um, and you have to take all these decisions, you won't be able to do that. Whereas, you know, when you turn it into just one small decision every day and you start from there, and then direction is what counts. You don't need speed. You need direction because if you move into the right direction, time is on your side. You, you're only moving closer to your goal. So don't focus on the direction where you're going and don't focus on speed. I know it doesn't feel good. We want it to be, to happen. But like they say, what do they say? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I think that's the thing. It's good, Kim. No, I love it. And I agree with you on all of it. I, I'm with you on this completely because I think that we do we set ourselves up for failure. And you're right. When you're talking about all those decisions, I'm thinking you have to wage war on your head, like making all those decisions. Yes. Now it comes back, you know, and I will tell you this, I, you know, I used to be a big runner. I'm not, I, I ran yesterday again a little bit. I don't run as often as I, you know, I did before because I found that I can, I have to do less impact. And I, so I really have to listen to my body and I shouldn't say I have to do less impact because sometimes I feel really good and I can do more. But, um, you know, I remember complaining in the winter because I would have to put all these clothes on to go outside and run. I'd have to put the gloves on and the hat on and the scarf around my yeah. neck and the leggings and the big sock. 
And I would just be like, forget it. I'm putting my shorts on going to the gym. Because to me, that was an easier decision because I could just put the shorts on and a t-shirt and go. So when you have to make all those decisions, yeah, you start having to wage war up here and go, well, how bad do I really want to do this? Right? So yeah, yeah I love that you're saying, let's take the, these barriers out, make this simpler for somebody to make the decision to say, yes, I can do this. Yeah. I like it. And once, once you do something, you get positive feedback automatically. And even if it's just this feeling, oh, I can do something, I did something and you create right. momentum like this. This is what you need instead of, you know, climbing this big, big mountain and halfway and think, oh, I can't do this. And then you fall back to where you started and, and, and that's not good. And when I started out as a coach, I thought it was about just, you know, giving people workouts, showing them what, how to build muscle and, and what to eat to fuel those workouts. Um, and now I think being a coach is, You know, it's not that because right. you can find workouts everywhere. You can find right. nutrition plans everywhere. It's help people actually do that thing. How do you actually do it? What you, you know, you know, you need to do it. And that's where people struggle. They don't struggle. I mean, everybody knows that it's better to eat, I don't know, chicken and broccoli than it is to eat pizza. You know, you don't need like particular knowledge for this. Uh, it's how do you actually do it? Yes, I agree with you. And you become that you're their coach. So you become their, their cheerleader, their support, their mentor, you know, the person that's kind of facilitating that process for them. So I love it. I love it. So I want to talk a little bit about your journey, what brought you to this, because I think this is the powerful story. I love, you know, I, I really love not that you had to go through this, but I think this story, this is what empowered you to be able to do what you do today. So I want you to share a little bit about this, kind of what brought you here. Yeah. Um, I'm actually grateful that this happened to me now. It, it sounds crazy, but, um, and my no, mom I get still, it. I get it. Yeah. I, I mean, I know how you feel, but I can get, I can resonate with what you're saying. Yeah. My mom still, still says, Oh my, but it was so horrible. It was so horrible. And it was horrible, but it, I'm grateful it happened to me because it changed my perspective. So it's a bit of a saga. I'm trying to make it, I'm going to try and make it like sort of, um, a bit shorter. So I had a first sort of autoimmune, um, incident uh when i was 45 my kids were small we were living in germany i was picking them up from school and i was seeing double and i knew something was wrong and you you know you can't sort of deny your way out of that one right so i went to the doctors was sent to the hospital I was about was to spend six weeks in hospital after three weeks i was paralyzed from the hip downward i could not wiggle at all all this time they were not quite sure um what it was because i had symptoms all over the place like the cross-eyed thing is from one syndrome and the par paralysis is from another syndrome so they they were pretty sure it was autoimmune but they couldn't put a name on it and they tried all sorts of treatments um all sorts of like uh, infusions and stuff um And one of them must have worked because after the, after a week of being completely paralyzed, my legs got some sensitivity back. It took a while. Um, after six weeks, they let me leave hospital. I was in a wheelchair. I could stand sort of, but I was not really very stable, but I was getting better progressively. And the very first lesson for me, that was just, I left hospital a day before Christmas. I had three small kids. There was a tree, there was food, there were gifts, everything was there. And I hadn't done any of it. And so many women, and I was one of them, think, oh my God, if I'm not here, you know, everything's going to go downhill. Like the world's going to stop turning. Nothing's going to work. You know, your partner's going to be totally overwhelmed, unable to do this. And I was gone and it, you know, the world kept on turning. And I didn't find that sad. I find, found that liberating. Because you do not have to carry everything on your shoulders all the time. And that's something I like, like really learned. Because sort of rationally, we can all say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. We could all be gone tomorrow. But, but when you've really lived it and felt it, then it, you know, it hits home. And I got better, learned to walk again, got treatment for a year, I think. Um, then we moved. We moved to France. And I one day woke up and I felt my left hand going numb. And I thought I have had, you know, I was through with this thing because they all said, yeah, it's, um, it's autoimmune, but it's a one-off. It comes and goes and, and that's what it did. But something else showed up and it was my hand and more 
tests and checkups and they said this time it's different because this time your immune system is attacking the white matter in your nerves and um, that's MS. And I thought, thought that was a really low blow. I, mean, I had just sort of recovered from this thing that for me was a traumatic experience. At the time in the hospital, um, I, 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 can't, I can't even exaggerate how horrible hospital is for, for your soul. You feel so dehumanized. You're a thing. And just imagine, even like this, you can't decide what's going on. You know, you can't decide when the light's on in your room, when someone is in your room, when someone's talking in your room. You have absolutely no power. Now, imagine this with not being able to walk. You know, uh, I, I felt like a thing. And I thought sort of I had done my share of suffering and I was sort of, no, something else happened. And that when I think back to those times, I, I feel darkness. It was dark. It was dark because you don't know with MS, you don't know where you're going. You know, the future is just a big question mark. You, know, you could go blind. You could be in a wheelchair forever. Now, my relapses had not done a lot of damage. My left hand is numb to this day, but otherwise I was able to walk um, and I had to accept the lifelong treatment from the doctor, even though I fought him on this. But I decided that I was going to become physically strong. I so appreciated the ability to move even after this diagnosis. I was sort of still standing and I thought I need to become physically strong. And I think this desire came from feeling so powerless in the hospital, from feeling betrayed also by my body. Because what? Do, why does your body attack itself? I mean, that's that doesn't make any sense. It's really like a betrayal. Um, and the idea of you know training, becoming strong, sort of gave me this idea. I might be able to rely on my body again, like count on it again. The doctor was not very helpful. He said, when I asked about training, he said, yeah, but you need to be careful. I have no idea what that means to this day. It means like, I don't know, I don't know anything about this. Um, I just want you to make you a little bit afraid so I don't have any responsibility for anything. But I got myself a book and I started training, you know, proper form. It was one of the first books, by the way, that said women should lift heavy. There's no, there's absolutely no point in dabbling in pink dumbbells. You know, you, you, know, you want to be strong. You want to have a strong body. And I got stronger. Like, this is the thing. I mentioned this with my clients in the two weeks. The effect um, shows itself very, very quickly. And I think it's because, first of all, when you're a total beginner, you just create all those connections between your, your brain and your muscles that, that were sort of offline or sleep, sleeping. Um, and you get a whole new awareness of, 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 your, of your whole system, of your strength, of your muscles. That's something that was, yeah, lying asleep or offline. Um, and then also the, the, the mental health effect, I think it's immediate too. You're creating new neural circuits in your brain that know that you can overcome resistance because that's what you do when you lift. And I think it's, you know, in your fiber, like literally the fiber in your bones that you are able to overcome resistance and that carries over into other parts of your life. Yeah. When you, when I now see an obstacle, yes, I can also moan and say, oh my God, what's happening? Yeah, what? The car broke down. But it doesn't defeat me. It's just, I move on to the next level. Okay, what do I need to do now? Because, yeah, it's an obstacle. It's resistance to a smooth sort of daily life. But I, I can overcome that. And I will do what it takes to overcome that. And I think with all the benefits of muscular training, and they go from metabolic to cardiovascular to bone health to joint health to everything, I think this mental health aspect is the most powerful one. Because it will then inform all the other things that you do in your life it will make you feel confident and and you'll feel be able to do things more things you will not give up easily and you will feel good about yourself and that's something that i i so want to share i just because it's basically very simple isn't it you don't need herbal teas you don't need i don't know turmeric or whatever it is you don't need complex diet protocols or whatever it 
you know, you, this, just this one thing will give you so much. So that's, that's what I'm spreading. Now, I got stronger and stronger. We moved again from France to Spain, so I didn't have to deal with a doctor anymore who said, be careful with exercise. Found myself a Spanish neurologist who's just the greatest guy on earth because after three years, he said, you know what? Would you like to stop your treatment? And I said, Hell yeah. yes. Yeah. Because it's very unpleasant. You have to inject yourself. You know, the injection sites get sore and you have like flu, flu-like symptoms. So I, yeah, I, under, yeah. I can relate with you on that. Entrepreneurs, are you ready to level up your leadership skills? Tune in now for an exclusive offer designed just for you. This is my time. Did you know 63% of consumers prefer businesses aligned with their values? Recognizing your core values isn't just vital for business growth. It's the bedrock of effective leadership. Whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or an aspiring creator, identifying your core values is a key step in constructing the framework of a successful leader, enabling you to lead authentically, expand your business, and live life on your terms. Are you ready to access tools to kickstart your leadership journey? Unlock a treasure trove of insights and get your free resources at www.linktree forward slash Jennifer Loading. Take that crucial first step toward realizing your leadership aspirations and elevate your leadership game today. So that was seven years ago. I mean, he saw me, he said, you can stop. I stopped seven years ago. I haven't had treatment or relapse ever since. And that's also when I thought maybe, just maybe, I'm onto something here. You know, I'm listening to you and I was getting chills when, when I hear your story. And a lot of it's because you and I have, I've had nerve conditions. So I can hear a lot of what you're saying. And, and although our journeys are a little bit different, I will say that nerve stuff is absolutely the most unnerving thing to deal with. I actually did get tested for MS. And this is part of why I do what I do in my protocol. And, and because I do think that our bodies, we, you know, like I was exercising when I did all, when I had my problem start, I was exercising and doing all those things. And I actually talk about in my book that I became a marathon runner during my hardest period of time, during the four years that I was struggling to get a diagnosis and to figure out what was going on with me. I did get a diagnosis with the first condition. I did come up with another, I got a diagnosis on the second when both of them, I think, are somehow connected um, in some way. But I, but we think it may be have something to do with the Lyme's type thing. Um, okay. But my point to this is that when you were talking about, I was listening to you when you were talking about being in the hospital, because I don't want to get into all my story in here, but I spent, before I got a diagnosis with my, I will tell you the second diagnosis I have, I spent, I went in eight different times to an ER clinic. Um, and I finally got to the point in the last visit that I went into, I walked in and I just said, you know, I walked into this, this freestanding ER clinic and I said, can you do liver panels and check for electrolytes? That's all I wanted them to do because there was nothing, I knew there was nothing they could do for me, but other than to make sure my liver was doing okay in that moment, and I wasn't deficient in my potassium and sodium because with this, that, that can happen. And I remember them looking at me and going, what you look like? I had been through this. I felt like so many times in my mind that I felt that they, when I would go in and you probably went through this, every time I would go in, they would act like I was crazy. They would diagnose me. I got diagnosed with costochondritis. I got diagnosed with an ulcer. I got diagnosed that I was having kidney brought, like I was having back pain, actually having back pain. I'm like, no, I know what back pain feels like. This is not bad. There may be back pain or foot pain from what's going on, but this is not because my back is out of shape because I run. You know, like this was this was what I was going through. And so when I hear you tell this story and I see like I can feel the pain, even though you're telling me it, you said it was a dark time. Like I'm like, I can hear that because that's exactly how I feel about my situation. It was a dark time, but I'm grateful for having gone through these because. Both of these two episodes that I had, the first one allowed me to get through the second one with grace and get through it a little bit, navigate it much easier than the first one. But it, it, it's taught me a lot and it's allowed me to take what I've learned and be able to use that to do good in, the, in what I feel like in the world, you know? And so 
I admire you and respect you for, for coming through that and figuring out what's working for you, because I think that's what this all comes down to. Because when you say the mindset, at the end of the day, if you think you're going to pull through, you can pull through. And if you think you can't, you're not. And that's exactly what it came down to for me. In that first episode, I went four years of going back and forth, a neurologist, dentist, doctor, neurologist, dentist, like back and forth. And finally, I walked into my GI clinic. Oh, and forget, I also had the GI involved in this too. So I walk into the GI and they walk in the room and they say, you're a conundrum. That was a defining moment for me because on that day, I walked out and I cried because I realized after four years, nobody was going to solve this problem. It was up to me. And yes. that, that day was a defining moment in which I was able to go, I'm going to do something. I've got to figure this out one way or the other. I'm going to figure it out. And that's sort of what led me into, for me, going into doing keto and figuring out how I could do protocols to reduce inflammation and add that to what I'm doing. So I love what you're doing. I love your story. I think it's powerful and you need to share it. You definitely need to be sharing it because it yes. is, it's, it's women hear this and they're like, dang, if she can do this, so can I. You know, I th I think it's really that's also something that I I I'm shouting from the rooftops. We can feel so low and so down, and like even the next step might feel like close to impossible. But it's never too late. We can always do something, and if we cannot do a big step, we can do a small step. And if we cannot go for a run, we can go for a glass of water. Something we can always do something, but we need to do something and not not give in or let others make decisions for us because that's so disempowering. And I think that lead, leads us down a path where then we lose all confidence and hope. Yeah, this is beautiful. I love it. Okay, well, I want to ask you kind of some fun questions on top because I think this story is just great. And I love, like, I love what you're doing. I would love to know like inspiration, like a book or a mentor, somebody who you feel like, I mean, I feel like I have a, like a ton of people, like books and people that I think have just been, you know, great mentors, but anything that stands out in your mind, particular, you know, influencer or a book that comes to mind? Well, that's, that's a tough one. That's a very tough one. Well, the very first coach who really inspired me because he was a fun guy and he was thinking out of the box. Um, and he, he's, he's also the one who wrote that book that I trained by. I mean, he co-authored that. His name is Alan Cosgrove. He was a poor immigrant from Scotland in the U.S. He's built one of the most successful gyms. And and he's just, he's thinking out of the box all the time. And, and he comes up with solutions. And I think that's that's something that we, you know, we could all use a slice from because we love like established protocols and doing this. And, and you, if you have this, you have to, you know, you need to do that. Um, and he every single time with every person he trains, with every program he writes, he focuses on what's the thing that I'm going to solve here and then find solutions that works. He has definitely inspired me. His book has led me to, you know, to good lifting and, and health. So yes, he's a, he's a great guy. Um, and there's another book that's got nothing to do with fitness and health that has really changed my life. And that's by Daniel Kahneman. It's called Thinking Fast and Slow. That led me down that path to understand how our brain works. And you will never see your brain, your mind, and the world the same way again once you read that book and you understand so many things. And I use that a ton in my coaching, and I'm going down that rebel hole as much as I can because that's where the key also lies to that behavior change I mentioned before, like how we actually get people to do things. And it's really important because so many women think there's something wrong with them. Like they have like a character flaw or a weak personality or um, <clears throat> low self-control, no self-discipline. And um, basically, it's our brain is sort of wired in a certain way that makes us act in certain ways. And when you come home totally exhausted, uh, stressed out, maybe sad, and you expect yourself to... You know, and and then you you come across I don't know a, a nice treat in your kitchen, and you expect yourself to be able to not eat that because you should be like superwoman. I don't know what. Um, and if you if you do eat that, then you think, oh my god, I'm just a bad person. No, you're human. Your brain is wired that way, and when you understand that, you can 
you can take control. You know, you cannot fight the way our brain works, but you can take control. You can manage it. And that, that's what I learned from that book. And it's, it's, it's really an eye opener and it's fun to read too. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. I always, when I, I, sometimes I ask this question, sometimes I don't, but it's fun because I'll hear different book titles that I need. I, I read a lot. And so I like to hear from you guys that are doing well, some of the things you're reading. And so I'll have to check that one out. So I want to ask you really quick, because I know you, we mentioned earlier about you coming from, you know, when I, in the bio corporate to your, to your business. And I do like to focus on the entrepreneur. We've talked a lot about the journey and what you do, but I really, I want to ask you this question. So coming from that space to your entrepreneur space, you're doing your own thing now, you know, leading this, this change movement, your business, all of that. What were some of the maybe challenges you had to get through? that front on the business side of things yeah well a lot of stuff that we do and it's i think it's the same in business as it is in health comes down to skills you need skills and yeah you can start your own business but that doesn't mean you have the skills that it takes and i i'm very much into learning i love lifelong learning i want to learn new things preferably every day so what I did was I got help right away. Like, I don't know, marketing, come yeah. on. You know, you're a journalist, you tell stories, and then you're supposed to market to people. What, what, what does it even right. mean? You know, right. what, what, what is that thing? Do I not just write things as they are? Like, you know, if you, if you want to build muscle, you have to train and you have to eat protein. That's what, what I want to write. So um, marketing is definitely um, a challenge. And then um, I, I was always um, good in like writing programs and putting stuff together and, and um, that, that work and that get people results. What is a challenge? And I think many can relate to this. And as, a, as an entrepreneur, it's something that you really need is believing in yourself. That's not easy. That's not easy. And you, you know, yeah. even after years and even after the most amazing results, Women who used to walk with a stick and now go horse riding. Women who lost 30 pounds in four months and feel happy when they're close again. All this stuff. I know that I can help women do all this. And still, sometimes there's this thing. Can I, can I do this? Am I really good at this? Should I maybe be better or do different things? So self-doubt, believing in yourself. It, I think it's very human. It comes up all the time. And what you need to learn is just, you know, take it as something that's part of the journey and not believe everything that you think. Take, but take a step back. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and you think, I'm not sure I can do this. And then you think, okay, that's what I thought now. I thought maybe I can't do this. Now we're going to see what happens. I'm just going to keep going. And then, then we'll see if, you know, that thought was worth anything or not. And then before you know it, you, you know, you start doing stuff and then you forget about that thought. But it's there, and I, um, anybody who says they don't have it as a, as, a, as a business owner or entrepreneur, everybody who says, oh, I get up every morning and I think I'm the greatest and I'm, I don't believe them. I think it's very human to, to have those, those moments of self-doubt. I agree with you. I actually heard something on a speaker recently that was talking about the difference between like self-worth and self-confidence, right? Like self-confidence is the skill set that you're talking about gaining the skills, but that's different from self-worth, which is what you're talking about when we have the doubt come up. And we really have to work on the self-worth part because you can get all the skills in the world, but if you don't get that part right, then it doesn't really yeah. matter. And I always talk about this because for many years, I worked with women in the network marketing space and we would talk about you know, talking to people, having scripts and scripts are great. You need them to start, but really you've got to get good at relational building. You've got to get good at having conversation. No, that's going to come from practice. And, and, and yes, that's going to be some skill set, but there's also going to have to be some self-worth in that because if you don't value yourself, it's really difficult to value somebody else and to be authentic and have those conversations. So I think that's really good what you said there. And, and I love this. And there was something else I was going to ask you. And I'm like, I'm drawing a blank in this. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. This is, all, so this is, all, I, I love all of this, Kim, everything you've said here. I want to ask you kind of a, a back to a personal question about yourself, because you've kind of talked a little bit about, and I feel like you, you've shared a little bit about what you've learned, but I would like to know, like, if you had to 
sum you up in like a word or two. Like, who is Kim Ra here? Who is she? Like, who do you like? see yourself as? Who is that person? Because I feel like I know what you are by what you're telling me in this story, but I'm wondering yeah. how you feel. If I, if I were to use one word, I would say curious. Which includes openness. Which includes lifelong learning, which includes interest in the person you're talking to, you know, the clients that you want to have. You need curiosity. That's why I used to be a journalist. And, uh, and it's the same in what I'm doing now. I, I need to know, I want to know what my clients' problems are, what their obstacles are, where the problem lies. And this is, by the way, very, very interesting that most women are actually not very clear on what the problem is. They think it's, it could be like they're eating too much bread or stuff like this. And most often it's the problem is somewhere totally different. And my curiosity that like, I'd keep digging until yeah. I find that problem. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. And, and that's, that's how, how I would describe myself. I think that it's, yeah. I, it's just one word, but it, it encompasses a lot of, a lot of stuff it that does. I love. No, I think this is a good word, but I also think you're, you're a strong, I, I like, if I were to put like words for you, I would say strong and resilient and You've got grit and tenacity, but yes, the curious part too, which I think is so good because I think that that, you know, when you said lifelong learning and all of that, and I think that's so important in the area that you're in, because in order to keep your clients, you know, abreast, two things, you got to learn, you know, about them and how to meet their needs, but it also keeps you fresh and innovative as well, that you're keeping up with things to present. And I, and I feel that way too. So I feel like you and I have a lot of commonalities in the way we're approaching, you know, our, our approaching the mindset of doing business. I love that you're talking about this dig. It's funny. I'm, I, I think I shared with you, I'm building, I've got this program built out and I'm working with the mentor. I'm always working with the mentor, but I'm working with the mentor too. right now to figure out, you mentioned marketing. That is, a, that's my weakness is the market. I'm good at creating, writing, putting things together, coming up with ideas. But when it comes to now, how do we flesh that out and put it out in the world? I struggle. And so I'm working with her right now on this. And one of the things I told her, she's like, what is your genius? And I'm like, I'm good at helping people clear blockages, get through their crap, get to the bottom of why they're making the choices that they're making. Because once we figure that out, now we can start working to clear it and do new patterns, create new things. But until we get that figured out, why they're doing what they're doing, they're going to keep doing it, right? And then we've also got to reduce the emotion. So she's trying to figure out, like, what is your, and I'm like, oh my God. I have so many things I can do, but how, what is the root? And so I love that you're talking about this dig to the bottom because I yeah. think that's so powerful when you get to that place because you can really help people make that sustainable change that you're talking about. So I like it. You've said keywords. I really like the digging, the one step, you know, like the, the system. We got to talk about sustainability, all of those cool things. Um, so Kim, if our audience, maybe there's somebody listening to this that wants to follow you. You got great stuff on your social media. I follow one on your Instagram. See, I love all your stuff you got going in there. But maybe somebody wants to follow you there. They want to reach out to you. Any of those things. Where would you like us to send them? Well, you know, my, with my name, you can go to Instagram and Facebook and maybe get a little glimpse of you know, what I'm doing, stuff I'm sharing, tips and helpful things, and then little glimpses into my weightlifting adventures too. And then if you want a bit more information, you can go to my website, which is kimrahir.com. And on there, there's a free health and strength assessment that you can take. And I think, especially if you're, you know, you're a midlife woman, you want to start something, you want to change, you want to know exactly where you are at right now. That's the first step you need to take because to go from A to B, you want to know where is A exactly. And I have a, an assessment there that's very holistic. So it's not, can you do five push-ups? It's more like how you're your your confidence and your strength fit into your daily life how how easy is your daily life for you and where would you like to improve or, or, or get some support and when you take that assessment i'll give you some pointers on where you can start what to do next um, and you can also book a call with me on that website if you want to talk to me right away uh, social media you can always message me i'm happy to answer this is awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. 
thank you for all of your wisdom and thank you for sharing your story and inspiring others. I think it's important. I think what we do here is, you know, I always say I had somebody come on my show and she said something about being light people, you know, like we're, we're the light seekers in the world that share, you know, stories and, and stuff. And I think sometimes you have to have these powerful things that happen in your life to really help you find that bigger purpose. And I think you're doing that. So I, again, commend you on that. And thank you so much for coming on this end on, on Starter Girls and sharing all of that with my audience. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks for the work that you do. Thank you. All right. And of course, to the listeners, we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. If you found this episode inspiring and informative, head on over to all the platforms. You can hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Give us a comment, a like, share, whatever you need to do there. It helps us continue to keep sharing all this amazing content. And as I always say, in order to live the extraordinary, you must start. And every start begins with a decision. You guys take care, be safe, be kind to one another, and we will see you next time. <music>